Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is your boy, Thunder Drake Studios, coming at you with a spicy deck profile. This time we have Budget Altar Guys. To give you an idea on how budget, this deck can be built for anywhere from $60 to $90, depending on some of your card choices. This, my particular variant, cost me right around $60 or $70, so let's just get straight into it. There's not much else to say. I mean, I mean, Altar Guys on its own is a fairly cheap deck. But with just a little bit of optimizations and not very much money, you can take it really far. N wasting no time, though, let's get straight into monsters. So starting off, we have three copies of Marionetter. Um, pretty standard for Alter Guys. I mean, searches out your spell. I mean, <laughs> searches out your traps and sets them from deck. Um, can't be ashed. So yeah, very good card. Must be a three of. Same with Multifigure. This is the card that really makes Alter Guys good. It speeds up your plays. It can search out a bounce in the form of Sokadis, and it's just good. Doesn't float, but I mean, you really can't ask for much more from this card. It's absolutely insane. Next, we have three copies of Melsi. This is basically here to search out for your multi faker, sometimes for Marionetter, but it's just your search of the deck and it can attack directly. What's not to love? Next, we have two copies of Sokadis, the best monster in the deck. However, <laughs> You don't want to see it in your opening hand. It is a massive brick, especially turn one, because the only float effect it has is returning an Altergeist trap from grave to hand. So it's okay. I mean, you really don't want to see it in your opening hand. You want to search it off with multi -faker. Um, Same with Kinkiri. I mean, you can work with Kinkiri. Um, it's a good card. Um, I mean, it's archetype specific battle fader. Anytime you have that, it's pretty good. Um, only as a one-up, though. Don't run as a two. Then we have three hand traps in the form of three effect veiler. This is where you could make it more expensive by playing Ash Blossom, by playing Ghost Ogre. Um, but veiler works just fine, especially with the presence of some combo decks running around these days. You really don't want them to go unhinged because Altergeist is a slower deck, but that's just common knowledge. You don't want your opponent to run you over before you have a chance to build up your board and your disruptions. So that's it for monsters. There's 15 monsters. Um, not really anything I would change other than maybe Effect Veiler, like going into Ash or whatever it is. But, I mean, you do you with this deck. I mean, Altergeist has a strength in that it's a blank slate. You can really do whatever you want to it. For example, with my, for my draw spells, I'm running three copies of Pod Duality. Some people like Desires. A lot of people playing Altergeist can universally agree that Extravagance is the best card for the deck. But that card alone costs about as much as this deck does, so... I mean, duality will work for now. You could play Desires, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it at 3, maybe as a 2 of, but... I mean, you can play the draw spells however you really want. Next up we have 3 one of um, 1 Monster Reborn. I would actually cut this card for a third copy of Protocol, but I'll get into that in just a second. Um, 1 Secret Village, of course, I mean, it's Altergeist. We want to play the Secret Village, we want to see this against Sky Striker, it's just very good. And then we have one copy of Necro Valley. And I'll get into just a, in just a second, same thing with Monster Reborn on why I'm playing Necro Valley in here. And they both have to do with the same card, which we're going to see in just one second. So that's it for spells, there's only six. Um, really don't need to play any more than that, you really shouldn't need to play more than that. You want to see a lot of traps, because obviously it's Altergeist. So, Let's start off with three copies of Spoofing. Do not cut this card down to two. It's a phenomenal starter, especially since to trigger Multifaker, you do not need to fire the card's physical effect. You just need to flip it face up and you're good. Then we have two copies of Manifestation. I know some people like it at one, but um, it's a searchable call to Haunted. You can bounce it back to hand with Spoofing as a chain link two during your opponent's turn. You can bounce it with Silkidus. You can return it to hand with Silkidus. And also, it's another name for spoofing, so what's not to love? Definite two of. And then I would play this card at three. This is the card I cut Monster Reborn for, Altergeist Protocol. This card doubled up with Necro Valley. Um, Necro Valley basically turns into a one-sided floodgate because your Altergeist monsters cannot be negated. Well, actually, Alter Altergeist cards, my bad. So, I mean, that just spreads even further. Protocol can't be negated, Manifestation can't be negated. Spoofing can, but it doesn't do anything with the graveyard anyways. So. Yeah, just absolutely incredible, incredible card. Definite three of. Then we run three copies of Lost Wind. You could place a two, and you could swap it with the next card we're gonna talk about, which is um, two copies of Metaverse. Metaverse is really good. I mean, you can't really beat activating Negro Valley from deck. Um, 
If you were to cut Lost Wind to two, play a third metaverse. If you were to play three metaverse, cut Lost Wind to two. I mean, either of those ratios work. Then we have two copies of Heavy Storm Duster. I was debating on whether I wanted to main or side this. Sorry about that, that's not very centered. I was debating on whether I wanted to play this in the main or the side. I like it in the main though, just because Salmgrade exists, Sky Striker exists, True Draco is still out there here and there. Um, I mean, Guru Control still exists. I mean, there are a lot of back row heavy decks. So, two Duster in the main. You could also swap this out with Typhoon in games two and three, um, dep just depending on your matchup though. But I mean, Duster works for game one. It's just a very good card. Um, two Black Horn of Heaven. This is the card that I would actually swap with Solemn Strike, but Solemn Strike is currently selling for about six bucks a copy, so I prefer Blackhorn because it's, I mean, it's like, you can find it for less than 50 cents, it does not pay life points, and it is a counter trap. This card is phenomenal in game three. Um, just incredible. If you can stop a summon on a counter trap with no life point cost, that's good for me. Um, so yeah. Two copies of Torrential Tribute, this card is how you get around the not being able to special summon due to duality. Because if you see um, Meliseek in your opening hand, then you also see Tribute. Um, you just normal summon Meliseek and then set whatever else you want, including Tribute, and then when your opponent does something, fire the Tribute, and then you get a multi faker and then you can fire that off too, it's just really good. And then we run the old man himself, one copy of Imperial Order. This card is an auto winning against Striker because they have no out to it nine times out of ten, especially in game one. Um, yeah, just a phenomenal card though. And that rounds out the main deck. 40 cards on the dot. Like I said, there are some variations you can make. But without further ado, let's get into the extra deck. This There are only 11 cards in the extra deck. So, um... It's not like your crazy ability to OTK with things like Boral Sword, but that's not to be expected with this deck. So, starting off with non-Altergeist Links, one Link Rebo, you have to play at least one of this. You could run Clara and Rishka, but Link Rebo is just so much better. Um, one Acacia Condition, you could run this, or you could run the newly coming out um, Security Dragon in Dual Power. Um, they both have their pluses and minuses. I mean, Acacia Condition does fit well with Rivalry, which we'll go over when we get to the side deck. But, I mean, it is what it is. You could, that, this is really a card where you could play either this or Security Dragon. Both have their pluses and minuses, but Nightmare Phoenix and Nightmare Servers do not have minuses. I mean, they're both just good spot removal. You don't go into them too often, but um, I mean, they're just decent cards. If you find yourself going into them, you'll want to have them. Um, now we have Altergeist Links. We run three copies of Hextia. Of course, this card is insane. Gaining attack. You got it. Spell and Trap Negation, you got it. And she floats. That is phenomenal. Now, wish I could say the same in all cases about Kadolga. Kadolga is a, is a strange card. You could, you normally don't go into this, but if you have a deck that spits out big beat sticks and you happen to like Torrential Tribute them or Once in Grave and you're going for game, Kadolga is your tool to an OTK. Imagine what happens when your opponent, opponent kaijus you and then you activate Torrential Tribute. Yeah, suddenly they have a 3300 attack point beat stick in the graveyard, 9 times out of 10. And their board will be empty. Use Kadolga and then a magical thing called Marionetter, or if Kadolga is pointing to a Hextia, you can just swing for massive amounts of damage in that one turn alone. Now, one copy of Altergeist Prime Yanshi, I find myself making this sometimes. It is the best thing for Hextia to point to. It's got 2100 attack. All the Altergeist links float, um, but this one has one of the better floating capabilities. I mean, adding from graveyard to hand, um, it's the same thing that Kadolga has. Meanwhile, Hextia adds things from deck to hand. Hextia is better in the early game, but in the late game, Prime Banshee is good as well. And then we have the big chicken, Raid Raptor Ultimate Falcon, just for the Waking the Dragon target. You could also run Churia Exterio, but I personally just like Ultimate Falcon. I mean, Striker has a hard time dealing with this. So that does it for the extra deck. There's only 11 monsters, so you can put in whatever else you want. Um, me personally, if I could afford it, I would put in a Boar Load as well, and then probably call it a day. A Boar Load, and then maybe an Exterio if you're against a deck that really loves their back row like this one does. But now let's get straight into the side deck. 
We have one copy of Eater Millions. I would actually up this to two, but it just doesn't come up enough. I mean, this is your out to Thunder Dragon Colossus. If you just really want to make sure that you can get that thing off the field, if you don't always see Meliseek, Eater Millions is a decent idea. Then, two copies of Rivalry. I don't want to main deck this just because Salmon Great is so big right now. I mean, it's the Budget Man's meta deck. So, like, it's it's risky to main the Rivalry when you could just come up with a dead card and then be locked into your Link Rebo. But, I mean, it's still a great card in the side deck and a definite two of. You could also play three, but I just like it at two. Then we run, then we have the other two Secret Villages. This is mostly when we're playing against Skystriker and we really don't want to get Ashed when we're off of um, Metaverse, because unfortunately it does include the phrase, add it to your hand or activate from deck. Um, so, I mean, you would take out the Metaverse, put it in the Secret Village, or you could keep a couple of Metaverse too, it's all up to you. Next are the six most important cards in this side deck. We run three copies of Wiretap, because our opponent likes to do dumb things in games two and three, and then three copies of Waking the Dragon, because our opponent really likes to do dumb things in games two and three. So. That rounds it out for my deck profile. Hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like and a comment and let me know what I can change in the future to help make my video quality better. And this is Thunder Drake Studios signing out for today. See you guys.